It's easy to assume that abusive relationships can either be fixed or escaped from, but there are several things that hold people back and serious threats when someone does try to get out. Hi everybody, this is Navdeep Kaur and welcome to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with another video about a very sensitive but important subject, leaving abusive relationships. If you haven't already watched my video on the early signs of abusive relationships, then be sure to watch that so you can pinpoint the abuse before it gets bad. If you know someone in an abusive relationship, then reach out to them and offer support and assistance. And please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking the red button below and the bell icon right next to it so you'll be the first to find out when I post a new video. Let's first talk about why it might be hard for someone to leave an abusive situation. Number one, they don't recognize the abuse because they're either blinded by love and affection or trained by their society to think that is how most relationships are. Also, abuse comes in many forms, physical, emotional, and psychological. So it's not always obvious. Number two, there are social pressures on all of us to portray a perfect life in front of others. And if a relationship is less than perfect, then we're forced to make it work. Sometimes for family honor and sometimes for the children's sake. Number three, it can also be hard to leave because there's a shared dependency on one another. This could be financial, physical, emotional, or social. Four, people who start off with low esteem or develop it after years of abuse might think that this is what they deserve and can't do better. Victims might even hold themselves responsible for their abuser's behavior. Number five, a very bad abusive spell can often be followed by intense affection, apologies, and overcompensation by the abuser for their bad behavior in many other ways. This good, almost honeymoon-like phase can often make it harder to see the long-term abuse and the victim continues to wait and hope for things to change for the better. And finally, number six, the dangers of leaving are very real. Stats show that women are 70 times more likely to be killed after a breakup than any other time during an abusive relationship. So how can someone escape an abusive relationship? The first step is obviously to recognize and accept that there is abuse. The next step is to make a plan. It may seem obvious that the victim should go to their close family and friends for support at this time, but that is usually not the safest option. Those are usually the first places an abuser will look for their victim, and things can only get worse from there. Before making a move, the victim should start looking for locations that they can escape to. This could be family and friends that the abuser doesn't know about, but the safest location for people escaping domestic abuse is usually a shelter. These shelters are located in unmarked locations that the abuser can't easily find and get to. If possible, the victim should also figure out how they can meet their financial needs when they do get away and how they're gonna keep their abuser at bay. The third step should be to ask family, friends, or neighbors for help, even if the abuser doesn't want them to be in touch with these people. Someone trustworthy has to know what the escape plan is and especially where and when the victim plans on going. An emergency bag should be packed and ready to go for a quick escape if needed. This bag should contain important items like IDs, passports, birth certificates, cash, important phone numbers, some clothing, and any documentation of abuse that might be available. This bag should be packed and ready to go and in a safe spot that the abuser can't get to. It's important that once the victim escapes, they completely cut off any communication and disengage from the abuser. Even a little bit of engagement can make things even more complicated and put the victim at a greater risk. Remember, there are many resources for people in abusive relationships, but sometimes a kind friend reaching out can mean the difference between safety and misery. And it might be scary to go to the police for help, but they are usually the best equipped to help people in these tough situations. Shelters can provide safe temporary housing in addition to counseling, support groups, legal help, child care, job training, and help with finding permanent and affordable housing. If the abuser still poses a threat, then the police can help with getting a restraining order to keep them away from the victim. And before I forget, 
It's very important to have documentation of abuse when possible. This could include things like dated journal entries detailing the events, audio or video recordings if possible, photos of cuts or bruises, and medical records. These can be crucial in helping with child custody, restraining orders, or getting the abuser jailed. I have listed important hotline information and other resources in the description box below. So please use that information to help yourself or someone you might know. There is help out there. Remember, the victim is not at fault for their abuser's actions. And nobody, I repeat, nobody should have to live through such intense misery at the hands of their loved ones. Please share this video with someone who might be in an abusive relationship and help them save themselves. Do you have any advice for people who might be victims of abuse? Please share your experiences and advice in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and click the red subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Until next time.